are you guys doing today? Good. Glorious. How are you? Oh, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> um, so basically, my first question is for Liu Li. I mean, you wrote the film with uh, director James Wan. Mm -hmm. Did you always have an idea of continuing Insidious? No, we didn't. I mean, we wrote the first Insidious film at a really particular point in our lives. I think James and I came out of the gates with Saw, and it was this you know, big success. And it's always interesting when you have a success first out of the gates. You know, it's like with a band, you know, when their first album does well, everyone's like, yeah, well, let's wait till the second album, you know. And then we did Dead Silence, which wasn't as successful. And we sort of did all our learning after the fact. You know, we were we were really blessed with Saw and everything went great. And then we learned a few lessons and got, got our ass kicked, so to speak, a few times. It was hard to get films off the ground. And we realised how the, how the filmmaking world in Hollywood really works. And I think by the time the opportunity to make Insidious came around, both he and I were just desperate to make a film. We didn't care about the budget. We didn't care about anything else. We essentially wanted to go back and do Saw all over again. And that's what we did. Insidious was a million dollar film. It was bare bones. It was total creative freedom, but it was um, you know very low budget. And we were not thinking about sequels or the future. We were just thinking about right now, this is what we need to do. We need to go back to our roots, so to speak, and make Saw all over again. And um, so, yeah, when it came time to make the sequel, it was kind of interesting because we didn't want to lose that spirit. And we didn't somehow. I think the second film on the set, it, was, it felt very much that, like in the spirit of the first film. Yeah. It wasn't like we had a, a huge budget or anything like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about that further because the entire cast is back and the story basically continues pretty much the next day. I mean, were you guys just able to jump back into it? Was there a lot of familiarity with the characters or did you have to get back into, into <laughs> horror mode again? There, I mean, there's a, obviously a familiarity with the characters. Like I joke and say, as soon as I put the wardrobe on, I was back, <laughs> you yeah. know, in the present, so to speak. But, um, I think the opportunity to recreate a character for me was a new experience because, it, it, you know, it's, I, I've never had that experience before where you needed to be able to incorporate, you wanted to make sure you stayed the same person and yet Elise is in a different setup, you know, it's like, mm. it, so it's, it's, she's something, something is different about her, but you have to maintain the elements that make her the same. And James was a wonderful guide in helping me do that and I hope it was successful. I haven't seen the finished film yet, but I'm hoping we achieve that. All right, so it's you know top secret. We can't really reveal any significant details about the film. But like you said before, Insidious was a huge hit, so there's a lot of fan expectation for the sequel. Titillize them. What can they expect to see in this uh, follow-up? Well, I can. I can. Scary. Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> first, first and foremost, that's what we want, you know. Um, but um, for the fans of the first film, I can say that a lot of questions that were lingering from the first film will be answered. And I think there's a lot of fun little kind of Easter egg surprises in there for fans of the first film. Um, without giving anything away, um, if I wanted to titillate them, I would say that this sequel visits the first film. And so there you go. Consider yourself titillated. And who knows what can happen in the further. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys.